Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to episode five of our fantasy Walt Disney World planning. And I am really glad that you're here. So if you did not watch my update on the other channel, um, please go and do that. That is where I shared that I may stop posting daily for the rest of the period of great unpleasantness, but I am going to put videos up as often as I can because I love my family, but also having this way to film every day gives me an outlet from my family. So I'm just trying to strike that balance between making sure that we get fed and things stay clean and tidy and I get all my work done and I can come and spend great time with you guys. All right, so where are we on our fantasy planning? Um, I, I think I'm gonna do maybe a little bit of clickbait in the thumbnail for this video, but I'm gonna get the clickbait thing out of the way right now. So so it's not really clickbait if you actually do what you say you're gonna do. I'm going to share with you guys in this video a deep, dark confession, something that you probably already know if you've watched any of my trip vlogs, especially in the last year or so, but that confession is, I don't really care if I ride rides at Disney World. <laughs> I know a lot of you, and God love ya, you do Disney World how you want to do Disney World, but a lot of you, a lot of you, are fireworks, no, do that, see, I don't even know how to do it, <laughs> rope drop to fireworks people. I am more of a pool time to margarita person. I used to do the park touring big time. I mean, we're talking back in the day before Fast Pass Plus when you would run around and gather all your Fast Passes. We were always there 30 minutes before rope drop. We were typically in parks until closing. I mean, we did it all. But over the years, and I partly blame Disney Vacation Club for this, I really do, because over the years we've gotten much more relaxed and we have become less and less focused on riding rides and more focused on just sort of the resort of Walt Disney World. So when I did my last video, which was about all the you know extra enhancements I had hoped to do to celebrate my 50th birthday, several of you commented either on the video or through direct message. Uh, hey, Jen, how are you going to have time to ride any rides if you do all those other things? And here's my answer to that. I might not. <laughs> Because truly, my favorite part of Walt Disney World is the resort experience, the restaurants, the lounges, the nightlife, the swimming pools. Basically, I am a resort girl through and through. It's why we have almost always stayed at deluxe resorts. It's not just the quality of the rooms or the proximity to a theme park. I like everything that comes with that. I like having a pool where people bring me food and drinks. I like having a hotel that has a fabulous bar and a fabulous restaurant right there on property. So basically for us, it's kind of like I mean, I don't know, people who like to go to Vegas and they just enjoy all of the resort amenities and they just gamble a little bit, that's kind of me in Disney World. Like I like to go to Disney and enjoy all of the resort amenities and ride rides a little bit. So this was the last piece of this plan. Just as a reminder, in case you haven't been watching every video in this series, but now is a great time if you wanna go catch up. We are there for five days and four nights, July 14th through the 18th. It is to celebrate my 50th birthday. Will that trip actually happen? You know, I gotta say, I am feeling optimistic today that it actually will. A lot of you probably saw uh, Disney has not released a date of when they're opening, but they are accepting resort reservations after June 1st. I think there's a lot of reason to believe that that may actually happen. So I am just going to hope and pray that that trip actually happens. Not so much because my birthday trip is so important, more because I'm really hoping that by July, the world that we live in will have returned to some semblance of normal or actually a new normal. And I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute because it kind of may affect our fast pass plans. But I did go through and go to my two favorite go-to websites to try to decide which parks I should go to on which day. 
Now, again, because this is not a trip for riding rides, I promise you we will not be in any theme park for probably more than four hours at a time. We're just not going to. We'll go in, we'll do our fast passes, and we'll get out. Um, and I'll get into, there's one day where we're gonna go into a park in the evening, but I would like to make my fast pass reservations. So I did kind of wanna see which parks, which days, and make a, a loose plan based on that, and then based on our dining plans. Now there's only one meal that we have in a theme park. So that day needed to be our Hollywood Studios day, and that was on the 16th. So that one was kind of set in stone, but I did go and look at all of the dates on two different websites. One is touringplans.com, and if you do not have a touring plan subscription, oh my gosh. In fact, I still have some subscriptions that they gave me to give away to you guys, so the next time we do a live stream, I need to give away some of those subscriptions. Somebody remind me. Uh, but I have been a member of touring plans for over 10 years. I think um, Brian and I figured out it's been like 12 years. I love their park recommendations. I love their ratings. I love using their reservation finder. It is just a fabulous website. They also have a great app called the Lines app that I adore, and it is a subscription, so you do have to pay for it, but it is not a lot of money. And I just find that it's um, super valuable, even for someone like me, who's an experienced planner in planning my trips. So I went there first and found out that the crowd levels, and again, everybody is just doing their best to predict right now, but are ranging anywhere from like a nine, which is the day we arrive on the 14th, all the way down to a five, which is on my birthday. So really not bad. I have certainly been there busier times than that. And if I have fast passes, crowds in the parks just aren't really going to bother me. And if it's a park is too crowded, we will just leave and go back to the hotel pool. Going back to what I already said, I'm not really there to ride rides. I know some of you are like, oh my gosh, it's just the way I roll. So Jen LaForge rolls. So that's the first website I'll use as touring plans. So when I went and looked there, everything looked fine for what I had kind of hoped to do. There weren't any big events or early closures or anything like that that I needed to worry about. The other site that I like to use is Shannon Alpert's WDW Planning School. Now, Shannon and I actually have been, we've never met in person. We did talk on the phone once. We've been kind of acquainted with each other for Gosh, Shannon, I don't think watches the channel, but I want to say 20 years. We go all the way back to uh, a, a group called Tour Guide Mike that we were both on together. We lived kind of close to each other. Uh, she came into the store where I worked a couple of times. So um, I won't say we're friends because I don't want to name drop, but Shannon and I are definitely acquaintances. Shannon, if you're watching this, you tell me if you think we're acquaintances. <laughs> She's gonna be like, I have no idea who that woman is. No, she does, she knows who I am. Her website is so chock full of amazing information. Not only does she have great printables, she has great touring plans, she also does these amazing park recommendations. So what I usually do is I compare touring plans and what Shannon has to say, a lot of the time it lines up, sometimes it doesn't, and so I will just kind of make my own judgment between those two websites. Oh, by the way, I'll put the links to all of the websites that I'm talking about down in the description box below, and also both of the um, websites I'm talking about have YouTube channels, so I'll put those down there for you too, because right now we all need to be supporting our favorite YouTubers, because it's rough. <laughs> it's actually rough out there everywhere. So I hope that you are doing okay and that you're getting through this extremely difficult time with some good humor. But we're not going to talk about that right now, right? The elephant in the room is ever present, but this is our space to not worry about that. So just know I'm thinking about you guys. Okay, so when I went and looked at, at both of those websites, the only date that was a bit of an issue was on my actual birthday. And Shannon has, uh, Shannon rates instead of one through 10, like Touring Plans does, uh, 10 being the most crowded, Shannon puts the parks on um, green, yellow, or red. The only park I have an issue with is on my actual birthday, and Magic Kingdom is red that day. I think they have an early extra magic hour. I'm not actually that worried about it because I really will be going into Magic Kingdom not for long to enjoy the atmosphere, to take some pictures for my birthday, probably do three fast passes, maybe ride Carousel of Progress, and then hopefully go back to the pool and then I've got my plans. So I decided not to let that bother me. 
If, however, you're a family and you're planning an entire day at the Magic Kingdom, let me tell you, if Shannon says a day is red, it is red. Like, listen to her. If you are planning your very first trip, if you're planning a big trip where crowds and rides are very important to you, you really can't go wrong um, following Shannon's recommendations. Okay, so here's what I have so far. We are going to go to Magic Kingdom, that at least is my hope, on our arrival day, which is July 14th. The three fast passes that I'm hoping to get are Haunted Mansion, Pirates, and Splash. And that's because Haunted Mansion and Pirates are both indoors and Splash is sort of indoors and you get wet. Uh, it's going to be very hot. It is July. We are at the Contemporary. I kind of see this being a day where we'll get there when we get there. We'll get checked into the hotel, maybe head over and ride those rides, and then we'll probably spend the afternoon at the resort, then maybe go back to Magic Kingdom um, in the evening. But this is going to be a very chilled out day and those are the three fast passes I'm planning on. Um, we have dinner that night at Narcoosie's so what would really make sense is to arrive, drop our bags, go do our fast passes at the Magic Kingdom, come back, check into our, you know, actually probably get into our room, get showered and ready for dinner, go to Narcoosie's. I think our reservation is around seven and then maybe head back to the Magic Kingdom after dinner and then walk back to our room. Doesn't that sound lovely? I don't think it does too. Let's go now. We can't. Okay. The 15th, I have us doing Epcot. Now, um, dinner on the 15th is at Topolino's, so this could actually work out really, really well. Um, we'll probably sleep in, uh, maybe spend some time at the pool again. Um, we have breakfast that morning at the Wave, and then we might head over to Epcot maybe 5.30, Topolino's isn't until 7.30, so maybe five, we'll head over to Epcot, and then we could get the, um, maybe just ride like maybe one ride, maybe two rides, I don't know. And then we would get the Skyliner over to the Riviera so we could eat at Topolino's. That's a little loosey-goosey, but I, you know, and fast passes, especially now at Epcot, are so weird. So probably I'm thinking Soren, maybe uh, Test Track, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. The tier system, I don't know how all that's going to work with everything that's closed because they can't have with Spaceship Earth out of rotation, I'm sure someone smarter than me knows, but we're just maybe gonna wing it. Maybe I won't get fast passes to anything, but I would like to get fast passes for Soren, so that at least. The next day is the 16th. Again, we'll probably do a slow start, and we are scheduled at Disney Hollywood Studios that night. Now, I could absolutely see me headed back over to Epcot that morning, maybe Animal Kingdom that morning if we feel like it. I really don't have Animal Kingdom on the list at all, and that's because it is the hottest spot on Earth in the summer, and I just feel like we spent so much time there the last time that Scotty and I were together. If you'll remember, that was when we saw the beginning of the baby giraffe being born with just its sweet little feet hanging out, and that was such an amazing moment once in a lifetime experience. And because it's such a short trip and we want to go at a slower pace, um, I could see us not going into a park at all that morning. And then going into Hollywood Studios late afternoon, I'm hoping to do Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railroad, Rock and Roller Coaster, and Toy Story Midway Mania. Those are the three fast passes I'd like to get there. And then we're going to have dinner at the Hollywood Brown Derby. So that should be a really, really nice day. And then my birthday. Um, I do plan on going into Magic Kingdom, like I said, in the morning. Um, I'd like to do Space Mountain, Seven Dwarves Mine Train, and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Go back to the Contemporary, hang out at the pool some more, um, do the... Um, dinner at California Grill, and then jelly rolls that night, and then that's my birthday. And unbelievably, that is the end of our trip. So there will be minimal park time. And I am I know I say if you've watched my vlogs the last few trips, that's not unusual for me. It's not unusual for me to not have a lot of park time. It's also not unusual for me to go into a park and not ride hardly anything. Um, one day in particular, and I can't tell you who I was with because it's Club 33 and, you know, Club 33 is like Fight Club. <laughs> you can't, can't. First rule of Club 33 is nobody talks about Club 33. But I will say, 
that Coral and I went into Magic Kingdom. We met up with our friends that are Club 33 members. We planted ourselves in the lounge there, which is just amazing. It's this 20,000 links under the sea themed, very nautical, absolutely gorgeous. Somebody kept ordering wine. We were in Magic Kingdom for, I wanna say, five hours, and we rode the People Mover. The People Mover, literally the only attraction we rode. And I had one of the best days of the Magic Kingdom I've ever had. So, you know, I, as my friend Cindy and I, who she's amazing, she has a YouTube channel. She also has an Instagram account that I'll link below. We call it Old Lady Disney, hashtag Old Lady Disney. And the best part about Old Lady Disney is you do not have to be an old lady to do Old Lady Disney. Um, you can be 20 and do Old Lady Disney because what it really is is just embracing the smelling of the roses, embracing the watching of the shows, the drinking of the tequila, <laughs> the lounging by the pool, the, you know, riding of the monorail for no other reason than because it's a scenic journey. And it's, it's just, to me, my absolute favorite part of Disney World. And I have to say, even when I was little, and we would get the big full color brochure. My father was a pilot for Continental Airlines and his airline every year would put out this um, like keys to the kingdom brochure and it had all of the resorts and it showed people, you know, doing um, parasailing and out on Bay Lake in watercraft and, you know, lounging by the pool. And, and I think I've said lounging in the pool many times, you know, riding bikes around Fort Wilderness and all of these things. And it is always what has made Walt Disney World to me a true vacation. I have never been fascinated by all of the rides. I love them, I do them, but the real shining star of the Walt Disney World Resort for this girl is the resort part. So if that's you, number one, I wanna give you permission. You know, you can actually go to Walt Disney World, stay at one of the resorts and never set foot in a theme park and still have a fabulous vacation. You can go to the spa, you can rent boats, you can do all of the things that I talked about in my last video. And it's kind of just like this Disney-fied version of an all-inclusive resort if you choose to view it that way. So especially now, when I know all of us are feeling some stress and anxiety, maybe for you planning that resort destination Walt Disney World trip is what's really going to make you, I don't know, just feel a little more calm and a little more at peace with yourself and um, with the world around you. So one thing that I wanted to say about the fast pass reservations is who even knows if this is how fast passes will work. Um, if you watched Disney Food uh, Blog did a great video, I'll put the link in the description, where AJ talked about, and if you wonder why I am really pushing other friends' channels right now, YouTube creators are hurting, um, especially Disney creators. A lot of you don't wanna watch vlogs in the parks right now because it makes you a little sad. I totally get that. Uh, but your YouTube creator friends do rely on views and I've been watching some of the, I'm, I'm doing great again because of my patrons, which by the way, patrons, I love you guys so much. I cannot even tell you, they are the best group of people. 92 strong now, which I that is mind blowing to me, but um, definitely go and check out new YouTube channels. If you have YouTube channels that you love, even if you put them on in the background and aren't really watching them, they really could use and appreciate your support right now. But um, what was the point of that? <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. I'm gonna have to watch back and look at the editing. Disney food blog, here we go. Uh, so Disney Food Blog was talking about predictions of how Walt Disney World might change moving forward. And I have to say what AJ said made a ton of sense to me. And she said, you know, if you think things won't change, think back to after September 11th and how many things are now normal for us that have stayed the new normal after September 11th that we never would have thought of. And that's kind of how I feel about what changes are coming to Walt Disney World. Now that we know there is a threat, we will be altering our behavior. Behavior. And you can go watch what she said, but I do wonder if there will be more virtual cues. And when I say change as soon, I mean maybe even as soon as when I go on this trip. It will be very interesting to me to see if they have changed some things, if maybe parades are canceled. I, I'm not I'm not sure what the new normal is gonna look like, but I know it's still going to be there and I'm still very excited to go and I'm very excited to take you with me. So for your 
dream Disney trip. Are you doing rope drop to fireworks? Because remember, you're going to plan your own trip. So you do it however you want, or you're going to do old lady Disney with me, or what's probably more normal is something in between. <laughs> But no matter how you choose to plan your trip, I hope you're having fun doing the fantasy planning. I hope to see all of us fulfilling our Disney dreams before we know it. I hope you're being very good to each other, and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.